Hey footy fans, welcome to the Point of Difference Rugby League podcast. I'm your host Dave and today we're going back in the day with one of the great Kiwi halfbacks. He kicked a wobbly old field goal in one of the greatest test victories for New Zealand over Australia. It's the one and only Shane Cooper. How you going mate? Yeah, very good, very good. Yep. Mate, it's fantastic to have you on the show. You know, I love getting the old Kiwi boys on and uh, yeah, it's just a privilege and just so cool to meet you man, it's great. Yeah, no, thanks for having us. Yeah, um, yeah, no, a um, few years since what we all uh, drop goal, but um, yeah, still enjoying life. That's good, man. Speaking of enjoying life, I've got a fan question straight off the bat from Lyle Barnes, and he wants to know how the old golf and snooker's going for you. <laughs> good old Lyle, eh? He, he, <laughs> he never shuts up. Uh, no, well, actually, he'll, he'll be disappointed to know that the point of um, snooker clubs closed down, so uh, we've had to alternate uh, where we go now. So we're off to New Lynn a couple of nights a week, but it's sort of disappearing, the snooker. A couple of guys are moving away, so sort of losing that, but uh, the golf is going pretty strong. A couple of, couple of days a week, I, I try and get out for a game. Uh, yeah, very enjoyable. Good competition. What's your handicap? I'm off 11 at the moment. They're all calling me a burglar, but um, I'm, I'm getting old, so um, they could all shut up. Yeah, man, you're some pretty good golf playing off an 11, mate. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that. So whereabouts are you living these days? And like, what are you getting up to um, with yourself in recent times? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm in Mount Albert. I was born and bred in Mount Albert, so uh, that's, that's where I am now. Um, uh, I, I'm working out at the airport in, in New Zealand. Um, got a year or two to go left of me yet. Um, yeah, one of one of my young fellas is in London, so I'm going to go and visit him next week. And I've got yeah. another another boy at home trying to kick him out, but he won't move. <laughs> Oh, we help you get the Zoom uh, podcast set up, so that's yeah, all that's, good. Yeah, that's right, that's right. He sorted that out for me, so that was, that was good of him. <laughs> yeah, they no, got their uses, I'll tell you. <laughs> that's awesome. So as you said, you grew up in Mount Albert. Um, so what was life like for you as a young fella growing up, up in Auckland there? Yeah, well, I come from a fairly large family. I had four brothers and four sisters. Um, yeah, and started playing my rugby league career at Mount Albert when I was five. Um, so, yeah, a lot of, lot of competition amongst the brothers. Um, all but one of them was older than me, so I used to go and watch them play and, and, and join, the, join the Mount Albert club, um, like I say, at, a, at an early age. Yeah. Okay. So was that like something you just loved from day one or did that passion to play come a little bit later on? No, I really enjoyed it from day one, really, I suppose. Um, yeah, um, league was in the family. My, yeah. my dad played uh, rugby league and um, his brothers. So, yeah, always always had rugby league around me um, and yeah. had a supportive family. Um, you know, used to take me to, to the matches that were required. So, yeah, it's always yeah. been in the blood. Nice, man. So... What was it for you about the game that kept you coming back? Was it running, scoring tries, smashing guys? Like, what was it? The physicality, running around like a mad fella. Um, I've always tried to keep myself pretty, pretty trim, or, or or looked after myself. So I enjoyed the training. Really, uh, yeah, the training was, um, you know, it's not it's not hard when you're young, but um, uh, yeah, always enjoy, enjoyed the training side of things and. Yeah, the the camaraderie and the friendships you make uh, throughout, you know, your career. Um, yeah, just yeah, I've, I've yeah always yeah enjoyed enjoyed watching the game, playing the game, socialising. Yeah, all them things. The camaraderie is great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. awesome. All right. So uh, when you were playing, when you came through as a young fella, would you say you were a natural? Like, did you have to work extra hard, like, to make rep sides or make sides at all? You know, and especially being in the halves. Uh, good question. Um, good question. I yeah. Um, don't know if I yeah. I, obviously, my uh, main school was my my ball handling skills. I, I wish I had a little bit of extra pace and um, 
I'm one that thinks you're either fast or you're not, and I was one of them that was not. Um, uh, but oh, yeah, I, tried, I trained hard. I, I you know, I, I tried as hard as the next bloke that was next to me. But you know, I, I had, a, I had, yeah, a couple of ball handling skills that probably other people didn't have. Yeah. Okay. So, um, when did that uh, representative sort of you know side of your game come in when we started making rep sites? Was that Right from the get go, like did you go right through the grades making Auckland? Yeah, very much, very much so. Yeah, um, oh, well, wow. yeah. Um, I can't even remember when the when the first one was. I've probably got a couple of photos somewhere along the line, but um, wow. yeah, I was always lucky enough to yeah play in some really good rep teams too. Um, um, when I was I was a young fella, and once again, you get to meet people that you you know you wouldn't otherwise. Um, mm -hmm. And and um, yeah, it's a great way of, of of meeting people. Sport, I think it's the best thing in the world to, to you know to, to to get to know different different breeds and yeah yeah awesome man. So uh, when when you came through and played for Mount Albert in the Auckland competition, like how did you find that step up? You know, playing first grade in the Auckland comp, it's full of Kiwis and like seasoned hard men who've been around for years just smashing guys like and little old Shane Cooper makes the step up like how tough was that man? Yeah, yeah. And, um well I was lucky enough to have some really good coaches. Um you know especially through my junior grades um Ronnie Regan's dad, Dino Regan, uh yeah. coaches mostly through through my junior grades. Um so yeah, taught us a lot of schools and how to look after ourselves and um, how to prepare properly. Um, and then my first uh, senior coach at, at uh, Mount Albert was um, Tony Krilitich. Um, he was a very wise man. Um, yeah, you know, I used to get you know just go low, tackle them low, and 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 you know you won't get hurt, sort of thing. Uh, um, yeah, and then we moved on to a very successful coach in, in White McLennan at Mount Albert. So I had yeah. some people looking after me. Don't worry about that. So when you were playing in the Auckland Comp, did you manage to avoid any of that thuggery, or did you did you cop a few during your time? You know, in oh, the top grade. Oh yeah, I got knocked out a couple of times in the top grade. Um, yeah, but I mean, it wasn't it wasn't too it wasn't too over the top um, physical, really. I didn't. I didn't think. Once I got to England, there were some <clears throat> real dirty bastards over there that sort of liked a bit of niggle. But um, yeah. in the Auckland comp, I, I didn't think it was over the top, uh, you know, physical wise. Okay. So, uh, did you win any comps during your time in Auckland? Absolutely, like, um... absolutely. How good? Tell us about it. Yeah. yeah. No, we won. Um, I think we won three Fox Memorials uh, in a row, I think, or maybe not. 81, 82, lost 83, 184, 85. Wow. Or maybe 186. Can't recall. I think so. Yeah, I think we won three in a row. Then I, um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we had a real good trot in the early 80s. Um, yeah. Real top, real top team. Um players that didn't really get recognized but okay you know, it's the whole yeah you know, it takes a whole team doesn't it and um yes. we, we, we had a crack team yeah we were really, really good that's amazing man so what about uh when you went over to Mangadi east um what was it like changing clubs and was there any of that like right we're coming up against shane like, like from your old club they out to get you well, my my manager at the time was my wife, and I didn't really want to go because all my friends are in Mount Albert, and I live in Mount Albert. Why would I want to go to Mangere East? Um, but um, she thought otherwise. She thought it would be better for me, and uh, in the end, it was. It was it was you know rugby league players the same world, worldwide, and um, once again made some great connections um, in Mangere. Had a, had a wonderful time. They're they're a great club, also. Um, yeah. Lost two finals with them actually, which was very, um, very disappointing. But um, <clears throat> uh, the other team was a better team on the day. Um, but yeah, like you say, um, 
yeah, it was a little bit nerve wracking to start with um, going to a new club and 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 doing all that. It's 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 um, not pleasant, but really at the end of the day, it was only half an hour down the road, which isn't far these days, is it? And no, um, not at all. And, and got to meet some really nice people. Oh, that's brilliant, mate. So, um, were there any particular players you loved coming up against or having on your side during your time, like playing at Mangere or or even in the Auckland side? Oh, the like coming up against. Mm. Um, no, I, I think all all around the uh, the Auckland comp at the time had some great talent and had some great teams. Um, yep. it just the just the all round. Um, Competition was it was was very tough and and um, you know we used to get good crowds at Carlow Park. We used to get you know sometimes ten, twelve thousand, even fifteen for the finals. So amazing. Yeah, no, it, there wasn't. Yeah, there wasn't one bloke that I'd say I I enjoyed coming up against. But um, yeah, you know, a lot of lot of players that I enjoyed playing with. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome, man. Uh, okay, so let's go to 1985. You made your debut for the Kiwis against France to get your test cap, playing 5'8". How did you find out you'd been named in the side and just how incredible was it for you to realise you're going to represent New Zealand for the first time? Yeah, that was yeah, that was on the tour of um, Great Britain and France. Um, yeah, didn't play the three tests or either, any of the three tests in England, but... Um, yeah, got named in in the um, in the test side against France, and yeah, it was um, yeah big occasion not only for me but for my family. You know, coming from yeah. a big family, and you know, you're sort of representing them also. You know, exactly. you're proud of you know what you've achieved at the time. It was it was an honour. Oh, that's awesome, man! Like just. Um... What were like your feelings and nerves? Were you nervous like before running out and hearing your national anthem and the build up? Like, what was that like for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, when you hear your anthem, it's it's you, you get a bit jingly. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Nerves. I don't know. Nerves. I've never. I, I've never been too nervy. You know, before matches. Okay. I don't know why that was, but I, I, I could sort of settle down and. Just enjoy the occasion. Um, I wasn't very good at the haka, that's for sure. That probably got me more. That probably got me more nervous, as, as you say, white men can't dance. Yeah, that, oh, that's awesome. I wasn't particularly looking forward to the old hackers, but um, there you go. Mate, that's fantastic. I love that. All right, well, at nineteen eighty six, you're selected to play Australia in the three test series. Like coming up against our biggest arch rivals, you're up against Wally Lewis and all the superstars of the eighties. Like, did you find that daunting or was it just like exciting? No, it was exciting. You know, I mean, you know, it's not often you get to play against Australia. So um no, it was exciting. And I think that year we we had a pretty young team too. So we we're all sort of in the same sort of boat sort of thing. It was um I can't remember if that was year or not, but anyway, yeah, I think it was it was moving on to the year where where we we were a pretty young based Kiwi team. Yes, yes, and uh, that 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 translated onto uh, you know the the following season, nineteen eighty seven, where you had a really young side, um, only like three players I think in your side that were playing in Australia at the time, and yeah. uh, you know you got that amazing win. Um, you know, yeah. against Australia, where you kicked that wobbly old field goal I was talking about. I mean, that mate, forty yarder, that forty yarder. <laughs> mate, you know, you're playing Wally Lewis, and I, I think Mark Hodder he told me on the podcast that um, the coach asked you all to, you know, just play better than your opposite number, and he's like freaking out because he had Wayne Pierce. And then you like realize you're up against Wally Lewis. He's like, I got nothing to worry about. Poor old Shane Cooper. It's got Wally the King. Yeah. What was that like for you, man? Yeah, well, although he's opposite, yeah, he does always come up against you, do they? You know, it's um he, he was just a name once again, he's just a name, just like the other, you know, 12 players. But um that was certainly, you know, a, a great victory. That's when we did have a young team, I think. Yeah. Maybe maybe Yui. Dean and Mark himself might have been playing in Australia at the time, but um, 
Yeah, uh, yeah, we trained hard and um, yeah, we come away with a surprise victory, which is absolutely thrilling, you know, to get one over the Aussies. You know, we all back in them days, we didn't do it very often, and uh, yeah, no, it was it's still lingering in the old brain somewhere there. Yeah, no, it was great. Yeah. Were there any moments like on the field where, like, because they scored early? And uh, you're defending your own line, you know, set after set after set. Like, what's the feelings like for you personally and, and as a team, you know, when you've got you know, Melbourne Ingers and Wally Lewis is all running at you and you're holding the line? Were you yeah. gassed? Were you just hanging in there? Or did you feel confident? Yeah, we did. I, I think we did throughout the whole match. I think I think if you look back, we probably could have scored more tries than we did. Um, we, we had a few yeah. opportunities also. So, um, and that's... Often what happens in, in tight matches, you know, you defend really well and then, you know, you get a couple of opportunities and we're lucky enough there were some good tries that we did actually oh, score. Uh, and then, beautiful and, tries. And, um, yeah, we had a little little plan ourselves to, you know, pass the ball about a bit and um, yep. it worked really good for us on the day. And, um, yeah, no, it was absolutely tremendous, one of the best. Yeah, man. I mean, that's like gone down in history. And what about the try to uh, Ross Taylor? Where you you actually passed the ball and it went on the ground, and then Sammy Stewart picked it up, bumped off a few guys, and then sort of got a ridiculous offload back to Taylor on um, coming through and scored under the post. How good was that, mate? Yeah, no, that was that was, that was great work. Um, you yeah, had a couple of good good guys that you mentioned there. Um, yeah, Sammy was just a, just a workhorse, and Ross can take a backward step. Well, no one. So yeah, no, it was um, yeah, no, it was a good feeling. Any, any, you know, once you go for any try, in a, in a special test match, it's yeah, you know, a little bit special, isn't it? Yeah, mate. And then we've got to mention the field goal. Like <laughs> she was a wobbly on one. Like I said, like what was the feeling? Like was that a planned move? Or was it just a just just snap one because the opportunity was there? Yeah, I think so. I think time was just about up for half time and. Um, it was, yeah, it was just, well, I don't know if it was the last tackle or or what. So, yeah, it was just ticked over in the old brain. Maybe maybe a point will come in handy. So, I don't yeah. think there was, I don't think there was a point scored in the second half. That's correct. Uh, you guys just repelled them set yeah. after set. And it must have been nice having that seven-point buffer, knowing they have to score twice, you know, with only a few minutes to go. Yeah, always better than a six-point lead, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, we did. We did, yeah, we defended really good, and and we you know we built up really good the week you know the week before we we bloody trained really hard I can remember yeah um you know, I think Tony Gordon was the coach I think and um, yeah no we did, we trained hard and we didn't take no prisoners that day it was it was, it was good for us yeah mate it actually sort of started picking apart that Australian side because they all got sort of dropped after <laughs> that game a lot of them. <laughs> so good on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How good. So uh 1987, you actually uh played lock for the Kiwis against Papua New Guinea. And you got to have another great win. Um 36-22 victory. What was it like playing the tough boys from Papua New Guinea and playing in the forwards? Yeah, well, it was it was hot. Well, I mean, it's and, and they're they are so strong. They they're incredibly strong. Um yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I was I, I played a little bit of uh, loose forward um, later on in my career. Once I'd slowed down a little bit, yep. um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a bit of a joke actually. But um, yeah, no, um, it was very, a little bit. I I played the role a little bit similar to a half, you know, a halfback. Um, okay, I certainly didn't charge a ball up like a prop forward or a second row. That's for sure. I was um, <laughs> shied away from that. I let the other. The other big boys do that. Yeah, man. <laughs> Especially against Papua New Guinea because they're very skillful. Uh, yeah, but they're not but, like massive, but they're just like powerful. Did you yeah, find? Did you get hit by a few? No, no, no. I, I would have passed the ball before that stage. No. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's no, what no. I would have done too. Uh, you, you need them forwards in your team. That's for sure. They um, they do all the hard stuff. But you know, yeah, I was it come come lately forward really. Oh, brilliant. I love it. Um, so you also played for the Kiwis, the 1988 World Cup. You know, you gave uh, PNG an absolute flogging in that uh, tournament and you beat the Poms 12-10. 
No, real close one. What was it like, you know, facing the the Brits for the first time? Yeah, yeah, yeah they they had a they had a good team. They had a good team. I think that was in Christchurch, and uh, the weather wasn't so great. And uh, I think that was to qualify for the World Cup, and we we okay. just um, um, yeah, I, yeah, we, we were not fortunate, but um, you know, to to win that one was quite a big one because you you go into the World Cup final and. Um, yeah, that was. I couldn't recall that being a very tight game. It probably could have went either way. Yeah, yeah. So with the size of the forwards and like uh, quite big in comparison to New Zealand, because they've always bred some pretty large men yeah. over in the UK. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they they've always they've always been very skillful. The English and the and the forwards, yeah. especially. Um, you know, they the very skillful pack and. Um, they were no different that day. They, I think they consider, consider themselves unlucky to, to lose that day, but that's the way yeah. football is. And uh, no, they 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 were a good um, they were a good team. Yeah. Yeah, man. So uh, you, as you said, you went to the World Cup final. You're selected on the bench with Sam Stewart um, to play in the final. I mean, good old Sam. Uh, I had him on the podcast too. He was fantastic. Um, and he, he said to say hello, and uh, he's really looking forward to hearing this one. He loves oh, you, mate. Yeah, no, and, no, uh, yeah, man. And um, so, just how exciting was it? How massive was it for you? You know, you're going into a final, the World Cup against the Kangaroos. You know, you're doing another white man's hucker <laughs> in front of a packed out <laughs> Eden Park. <laughs> yeah, how's that all go down for you, mate? Yeah, well, it was all yeah, the build up was um. Probably, probably not as great as it could have been. I think we got distracted a little bit in in that game. I think there was okay. a few distractions, um, injuries, and um, yeah, we yeah we got a little bit lost in that game, which is so sad because the first time at Eden Park, um, they yeah, and they yeah they took it to us the Aussies. We couldn't really. They respond to them early on, but um, yeah, it, it was sad. It was sad, but um, yeah, I, I mean, what can I say? We lost, we lost quite quite a bit, and yeah, yeah, we had the big build up, and you know, there was thousands of Kiwis there, and and, and thousands of Kiwis really trying to egg us, um, g us up, you know. Yeah, yeah, we somewhat let them down. I thought on the day. Yeah, it must be hard, you know, losing a final. But when you look back, though, when you look back at your career and you think, you know what, I played in a World Cup final for my country against the best of the best. And, like, it must be pretty special when you turn around and look yeah. at that. Yeah, no, true, true. Uh, yeah, uh, I still have lingering thoughts of things not really going the way the team wanted to go. You know, we, we yeah, we... Um, Eden Park was new to us. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Just a few things didn't didn't sort of fall into place that day, um, and, and we sort of let the public down, which was yeah. I mean, it, right, great that I played in a World Cup final, but at the same time, a lot of still a little bit of sadness that we sort of you know didn't really didn't live up to the hype of the game really on that day. Okay. Fair enough, I suppose. Fair enough. All right. So while we're on rep footy, there was a rest of the world versus Australia match where you played five eight alongside some pretty amazing players, you know, like uh, including Sam Stewart, Kevin Ito, you know, Dean Bow, Ellery Hanley, Wayne Wallace, Canterbury Legend, uh, Mark Graham, you know, just to name a few. Uh, you know, what was that experience like teaming up with like Poms as well as the Kiwis and taking on Australia? Yeah, I think Lowy Lowy was coach that day, and he, he got us to mix and mingle really well. I think I room with uh, Ellery Hanley. Uh, oh, wow. Who was an absolute terrific um, rugby league player. Yeah. He, um, Andy Gregory also, I think, uh, was a roommate. Um, yeah, it's a couple of couple of them boys were really skillful. Um, but, yeah, we all got on really good. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. World Cup, um, you know. Represent, you know, the rest of the world. It's something yeah, different once again. I don't think it happens now, does it? 
No, I wish they would bring something like that back. It'd be incredible to watch. Yeah, it would be. It would be. I think the, the sort of club challenge probably takes over that sort of thing now. Ah, uh, right. Like, yeah. imagine, say, 10 years ago, having someone like Sam Burgess in the New Zealand forward pack, you know, or, or the rest of the world team with a few of the big Kiwi boys like Jesse Bromwich in his prime or something like that. That would be unreal. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So, um... So let's talk about you going over to the UK. Like, how did that opportunity come up to go to St. Helens? What was the experience like, you know, getting on the plane, flying into the unknown and heading off to the UK? Oh, it was great. It was great. Um, I think Mark Elia um, was over there playing at the time, so that made life a little bit easier for me. He was um, playing for St. Helens, and he. I, I think he must have... Um, put a good word in for me and uh, I signed, I think, 80, 87, I think. Um, okay. I was still at Mangry then. I, I had an off-season over there. Um, come back and finish my stint with Mangry and then went back there on a three-year contract. Um, but great, great people, really, really nice people. Um, yeah. although, although you're sort of taking a job away from a local um, you know, they they might they mix it and train in a little bit. They try and give you the yeah. old bump here and bump there. The but um, <laughs> once you've been there, once you've been there for a while, um, I, I found them really, really great, really great, really great. That's nice, brilliant. nice people, and, and they do do anything for you. And yeah, I loved it. It was, I think, I signed for. Um, after that three years, I think I signed for one year at a time. After that, I, I think I ended up being there for about nine years or something. Far out, you did. You were there for quite a long time. Um, so, you know how you said when you went to Mangere East, uh, it was quite nerve wracking going to a new club. Like, what were the feelings like when you landed at the airport, got off the plane, and you're making your way to training for the first time? Were you bricking it, or were you just like you know freaking out? Yeah, I think I probably, I think I probably was. Yeah, but new new country, you know, you have to. Get a house, you know. You they will sort yeah. out with the house, but um, yeah, you're you're a long way from home, and um, it, it's a it's a big it is a big new experience, and um, yeah, it was a little bit nerve wracking um, going to meet everyone for the first time. I had a coach yeah. called Alex Murphy, who was a bit of a legend over there. He was he jumped from club to club to a lot of clubs he coached, and. Um, but yeah, no. Once once you'd been there a while, um, they take you under their wings and, and, yep. and after you. And yeah, no, it was nerve wracking to start with. But hey, it's um, any new jobs like that, isn't it? And really, that's what it was. It was yeah, it was um, yep. going to a new 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 place for a new job. Really, yeah. Did they like hook you up with a car and a house, or did you have any horror stories about you know making the switch over there? Uh, oh yeah, um, yeah. They showed us a couple of hours, and I thought, oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, this is great. And I took the wife there, and uh, no, 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 no. We don't want it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. A bit of back down off that one, and yeah, but uh, uh, no, no real horror stories. Um, once you, once you settled in, it's 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 a lot of fun, and it's a great place to be because you can tr do a little bit of travelling in the off seasons and. Oh, nice. countries and, and and yeah in the off in the off season yeah no, good. beautiful loved it loved it loved it, loved it. awesome man so uh do you remember making your debut for saint helens who was it against and what did you think of the english style of play like did it suit you and did you like the conditions i didn't mind that i didn't mind the conditions yeah we were playing in the in the winter time um then um and they were they were Nice grounds, nice and tight, and and the support was really electric because you know the the supporters liked it just to be out on top of you, um, yeah. and yeah, no the um, the weather. I mean, the weather wasn't as bad as a lot of people make it out to be. I mean, it's always warm okay. inside the pub. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't 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 as bad. I think we might have got one game. Um, cancelled because of frost and the time I was over there and okay. uh, yeah so really uh, no it wasn't too bad at all the conditions but it does get 
pretty grim at night time, like, you know, three up at three, four o'clock. It's pretty, yeah. pretty gray outside. Um, doesn't change much from that, but, um, yeah, yeah, no, no, I can't, re I can't recall. Um, we might, I might've played Lee first up on thinking. Um, okay. yeah, can't really, no but, um, I think we won. <laughs> Let's go. We'll go with that. You won against Lee. <laughs> So um, you played some pretty massive games for St. Helens. You went to the Challenge Cup final in only your second season playing over in the UK. How incredible was it to go to Wembley, like experiencing the magnitude of it all, you know, playing Wigan as well, like, you know, the arch rival Wigan, St. Yeah. Helens, how good. Yeah, yeah, they were, we were neighbours and um, they were the arch rivals for sure. Um, and we, yeah, we... Obviously, what a place to play rugby league at Wembley! It was it was amazing. I can't recall ninety something thousand people maybe there, and um, it, it was really, really the whole weeks. It's pulled up, you know, weeks have pulled up and and all that. And unfortunately, are we going to tell the viewers what the score was? We can, if you like. <laughs> I know the score. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. Yeah, it was. They scored a lot and we scored nil. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one of the things that stood out for me um, after the game and, and, and when we had to come back to St. Helens, we had, it's a, it's a tradition, you have to hop in a open-air bus and, like, we've been thrashed, right? We've, yeah. we've lost 27 nil and yeah. um, we've hopped in, in this double-decker bus to go around town to applaud the spectators and it's something yeah. I, just, I just didn't want to do. No way after a loss like that, I want to go and bury my head. But there was one sign, there was one sign that sort of stood out for me. It, it had Wigan 27, St. Helens shit. <laughs> and we were, we were shit on the day. Yeah, the, probably oh, the most that's, disappointing that's final I've ever played and what well, would it be the most disappointing final I've ever played in. Yeah. Mate, it's so hard to get to a Wembley, mate. It's so hard to get there. Then to, yeah, no, oh, it I is. didn't turn up on the day. No, no, we, we were we were poor. We were poor, yeah. Yeah. Was there anything that went wrong on the day in particular or was it just where oh, we were on? I think, I think a lot of it had to do with preparation. Um Okay. A lot of it had to do with preparation. We, yeah, we, but hey, don't don't get me wrong. Wigan, if you read the team out, they 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 amazing. were they had an amazing team. You know, a really good team, really good team. Yes. So uh, you didn't get another chance. You went back to Wembley, nineteen eighty nine. Um, oh, actually, you, you went uh, to the semi finals. You came up against Wigan again. And uh, they pipped you twenty to fourteen, and um, and then nineteen ninety you went to Wembley again, and again it was Wigan. Unfortunately, beat you thirteen to eight, mate. What's up with Wigan? Are they your bogey side? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. They 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 very good team, but but in ninety it was a ninety ninety one when we went back there. We we had a pretty good team too. We 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 bought some um, a guy called Kevin Ward that played. I think he played. He played at um, Castleford, and then he played at Manly. And he yeah. was honestly, he was he was older than me, so he must have been old. He was so good. Um, yeah, um, we had we had uh, Mike McLennan over there coaching us at the time, and he he made a difference to our team. He prepped us better. Um, Wigan um, once again. Um, Paid the referee. Oh, did I say that? I mean, <laughs> influence the referee. Um, yeah, um, yeah, that was sad too because you know you go twice and you lose twice. It's nothing you want to sort of talk about too much. Yeah, yeah. mate, that's tough, mate. Eh? Because I actually did some digging. It turned out in 1988, 89, 90, 91, 92, 1994, we're gonna knock you out of the Challenge Cup. That's yeah. a lot of times. Thanks, thanks for reminding me. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> no, they, oh, that's funny. Yeah, that, they, had, they had some good players. They had Ellery Hanley, Dean Bell, Adrian Shelford, um, oh, mate. Joe Lloyd and Steve Hampson, Andy Gregory, Sean Edwards. I think we 
we had Andy Platt that played um, with the Warriors. Yes. We, we had him. Yep. They bought him. He was one of our better players. They bought him. They ended up buying Gary Connolly, one of our young stars from St. Owens. They just bought everyone. They just bought okay. everyone. No, nah, they, oh, they, were, they were good. They were good. I sound, good. I sound like I've got sour grapes, but yes, I have. Yeah. <laughs> so there was one time you got the win over Wigan in a big match. 1992, you won the Premiership Trophy, beating Wigan 10 to 4 in a close one. Was it relief or pure ecstasy getting the pure win ecstasy, over the old phone? Pure ecstasy. I still can recall every moment of that match. Yeah, no, it was, it was, and really the Premiership. It's, it's 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 not a it's not well it is a little bit of a knockout but you know as the challenge cup goes it's it's a knockout round but you, you know you build up for the whole year for the premiership and I'm sure I'm sure other people say the same thing it's probably what you really want to win um, yeah although of course you want to win a challenge cup but the premiership was um, you know the one you play all year for and yeah we come yeah. up and. Um, yeah, played at um, Old Trafford in Manchester, and um, oh, wow, and um, yeah, come up with the goods. Mike was our coach, Mike McLennan. Uh, we had Georgie yep. Mack and Tierra Party, um, a couple of wow. starring Kiwis. So yep. yeah, no, we um, we gave it to that Wigan team. You did indeed, because they beat you in the Premiership final the year before. Is that right? Yeah, no, I can't remember. Sure that. They did. <laughs> yeah. So uh, while we're on Challenge Cup, um, I noticed it was actually St. Helens who knocked out Witness in 1996 and advanced to the final and win after you'd moved from St. Helens to play for Witness. <laughs> Did that leave a little sour taste in the mouth? Well, we ran them really close, actually. We, we you know, I was, yeah, I was over the hill, I think, by that stage and uh, hung on for a couple more years. But um we 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 actually ran St Helens really close. Um, yeah, I think it might have been four points, was it, or or something like that. Oh, I can't remember the score. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, and, and that was in the semi final. But um, yeah, that's where the cookie crumbles. Sometimes you can't win them all. No, you can't win them all. Um, so a really amazing feat that you uh, came up with during your career. You scored six tries in one match. Uh, you know, what was that experience like? Who was it against? I mean, that's something you can't forget for the rest of your life. Yeah, that was against Hull. Um, yeah, at, at our ground, Nosley Road. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, it, I was backing up pretty good that day and, and, and the ball went my way sort of thing. Sometimes you back up and, 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 and you don't get the ball right. So, um, yeah, I think we, yeah, we gave Hull a bit of a hiding. Um, yeah, I was lucky enough to, yeah, like you say, score six tries, and I don't know if it's still a record now, but I think Kevin Oro matched it a few years later. And um, okay, you know, obviously, you know, um, yeah, it was a great feat. But um, it was once again, it still, it still takes your teammates to, you know, open their gaps for you and and, yeah. and do the hard work. Yeah, yeah. mate, it's pretty incredible. Don't know many players who've scored six or more in a game. I can only think of, you know, oh, Martin O'Fire. You know, he's a freak. He, I think he scored ten in one game. He did. He did. I'm he not scored. sure who it was for, but I know he did. Yeah, no, he did. Witness. I think he scored him for witness. I think ten okay. tries in the first sign for witness. But um, no, I was here. You know, it, it was it was great. Yeah, I don't score many tries, but um, yeah, that day I did. Yeah, that was it was yeah, six. <laughs> <laughs> Off the nudie run that year, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, 91 92, you went all the way to the final of the Lancashire Cup against the Rochdale Hornets. You had fellow Kiwis, Tiro Party, George Mann, and you had the Beast, that's Kevin Ward up front, like you said, and you got the win. How special was it, you know, to get one of those big trophies in the cabinet, you know, especially yeah. after losing so many opportunities in the Challenge Cup? Yeah, yeah, no, they did play a lot of lot of cup matches over there, and it it made the season quite hard because if you had a good run in the cup matches, you'd end up playing, you know, sometimes 40, 40 games a season, and um, yeah, to 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 get any trophy over there is pretty t pretty tough going. So yeah, um, yeah, we were, we were pleased to beat Rochdale that day. Yeah, yeah, man, more than pleased. Yeah. Absolutely, that was. 
you know, it, it, like you said, it's such a long season. Like, did you find that really taxing on you by the end of the year? Like, especially if you had international duties as well? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. And um, some, sometimes, you, you know, you come back and you in the off-season, you'd have to play, you, you know, I, I did that first off when I come back in the first year and, and played at Mangri. Yeah. Went to the went to the final that year and then had to go back again. So, you, you know, you're... You're playing a lot, a lot of, and it is taxing on your body more mentally too. You know, you, you, it's yeah. hard to get up all the time. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, 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 yeah, I found that hard when I first started, but yeah, after that, I think I rested in between the seasons. Okay. Uh, although although I did come back and play a little bit of um, for the Kiwis, I think early on in my career. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. So '95, you, like you signed with Witness, so. That was right around the time Super League was coming along and, you know, Witness were literally fighting for survival in the Premiership. So like, why did you leave St. Helens and what was the thought process heading to Witness? Uh, I, I left St. Helens because they didn't want me anymore. Okay. <laughs> that hurts. That hurts. I, I was, yeah, I wasn't young. Um, and, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, and, and Witness are, um, like you say, in, in the next uh next division down and they've lost uh, a few players and they were only they were nice and handy to where I lived. Uh they were another okay. neighbor ours with the famous Kurt Sorensen. Yeah, mate. Um so yeah I went there for a couple of years and and um dragged my body along for a couple more years and yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know once again meeting new players they had some they had some good Good, good boys there. Um, yeah. And and once again, the supporters, you know, they get right behind you. And uh, it was, um, you know, it was it was fun just to finish up there. Yeah, man. Like, there was, like they have so many massive names that have come through the side. And not too long before you arrived, I might add, you know, with like your Asinis and uh, Amossis and yeah. Kurt yeah. Sorensen and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Jonathan Davies and John Devereux. Was John Devereux still there when you played? No, he wasn't there when I played, but he I played against him a few times. He's he had a strong body, you know, like you say, Jonathan Davies and uh, um and and the sorry and Kurt and yeah. all the boys you mentioned. Another guy there, another Kiwi sort of went under the radar, radar was a guy called Joe Grimmer. I, yeah, who yes, also, I forgot about him. Yeah. Who I actually like... went to school with when I was a young boy. Yeah, he used to you steal really? my lunch at school. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, so>, um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, mate, that's funny. And, and you just, the good thing about it was there was lots of Kiwis over there. No matter where you went, there was um, Kiwis at the time playing virtually everywhere. So at every club, yeah. you had a little Kiwi. So um, that made it made it better for us all. Yeah, did you just instantly connect with each other just purely because of that brotherhood of being Kiwis? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You, would, um, you know, we'd try to get together at Christmas time and do something and, um, you know, made made working away from New Zealand a little bit easier for us all. Nice, nice. So how did your time at Witness go? Like, did you enjoy it? Was there any particular moments that stood out from your time there? Well, I do remember that semi-final that we played St. Helens. I thought we were going to get one over me old club, but um, <laughs> no, we didn't. And um, I think I think Dougie Lawton was our coach when I yes. signed there. And then I think Graham West um, come along and, and coached us for a season. Like I say, I was only I was only there for two years, so um, it was it was a pretty short stint. Um, but yeah, I think we did all right. Um, we won most of the matches, I think. Nice man. And so you got to the end of witness. So was that the time that you hung up the boots and um, decided to call it a day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I come back home and I don't know ninety. When we come home, Paulie. 90 something. 98. 98. All yeah. right. So what were the feelings like? You know, you know, after all these years of playing footy and you decide yeah. to one day you're playing the day the next you're not. Like how does how does that work for you? Yeah. Um oh I mean, you know, you, you do realise a little bit before that that you you know you're gonna have to get up in the morning and go to work and um <laughs> yeah. Um but oh, I, I I also like coming back home, you know. I, like I said earlier, I come from a fairly large family, so it was good to re reconnect again. And um, 
and, and settle settle sort of down into into a bit of a lifestyle back back here in New Zealand and um, yeah, got a couple of young kids at the time and yeah, you know, do the do the daddy things, take them to school and pick them up and do all, all that sort of drama. It's, it, it was just the right time, I suppose, as a family to come home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I thoroughly, really enjoyed England. It was, it was, it was nice. The people were great. So, what did you get into uh, work-wise when you retired from the game? What did you get into? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at in New Zealand um, working in wheels and brakes at the moment. So, um, trying to scrape a living that way. So, you've been doing that all these years since then. Yeah, I think I have. Yeah, yeah. Wow, awesome, awesome, man. Right, so we're going to finish with a few fun questions that I ask everybody. Uh, so, who do you think is going to win the NRL in twenty twenty four? I I reckon the Roosters um, had a disappointing year last year. I th I think the way they're going, and they've got some a lot of class. Joey Manu's outstanding. Yeah. I I just fancy them as a bit of an upset. Yeah, I reckon they're traveling on pretty okay. They they have the odd speed wobble this year, but they seem to have come right in the last few weeks. Every team has a speed bump, speed bump, don't they? They had a speed bump. We've had it. I was the Warriors ahead had there, so they're coming yeah. right now. It's a pretty wide open comp, wouldn't you think, at the moment? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It does seem to be, doesn't it? Most seasons, yeah. Penrith have been outstanding right. um, for the oh, last few years. That is so yeah. what mentally tough. Yeah, man. What about in the Super League? Who do you think's going to take Saint out? St. Allen's, the Allen's, they'll get up. They'll get up over yeah. again. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'm going back there next month, so I have to say that, don't I? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. So who do you support in the NRL? What club do you follow? Well, I'm, I'm a Warriors fan, you know. There um, you go. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day when the Warriors weren't involved, I, I like Parramatta because they were blue and gold, the same as Mount Albert. So, um, right. I used to follow, um, yeah, the Parramatta team, but now the Warriors back in the eighties. Yeah, absolutely, they had a good team too. Unbelievable side, unbelievable. Yeah. I had Steve Eller on the podcast a couple oh, of weeks okay. ago. Okay. Unbelievable, yeah, he was yeah. a freak. Okay, man. So, what is your favorite TV show or TV series of all time? Oh, Mesh. Oh, mate, that's like the third time someone said that. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Yeah, I used to like Mesh. I'm a Hogan's Heroes man. You know, oh, yeah, well, show. a little bit similar, eh? A little bit similar. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Okay, man. Last question. If you could eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Um, Chicken curry. Chicken curry. How good. Just had it tonight. Green chicken curry. It was beautiful. The wife cooked it. Oh, mate. Yeah, she's good. listening to me, so I'll have to give her a plug. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on the Point of Difference Rugby League podcast. Going back in the day with me, it's been an absolute treat hearing from one of our Kiwi legends. You know, you played some unbelievable matches during your career. It's just been a thrill to meet you, mate. Yeah, no, thanks, Dave. Enjoyed it. It's good. Awesome, man. And uh, thank you to everyone out there for watching on YouTube and listening on Spotify. Make sure you get on the Facebook group, Point of Difference Rugby League. There's heaps of legends on the group. And heaps of people joining every day, sharing all our nostalgic photos and moments. And, you know, the podcast is on there as well. So uh, thanks again. And we'll see you all next time for kickoff. Full time.